Welcome to Inspiration Bible Church Online. We're so glad you've tuned in today. I'm Pastor Greg, and this is my beautiful wife, Starlene. Hello. I'm so excited for what is in store for you. There's a message today that's going to inspire you, equip you, challenge you. It's going to be amazing. And we're also just so thankful for your continued support. And there's several ways you can give, mm -hmm. and you can do that by mail, 3939 North Pearl Street, Tacoma, Washington, 98407. Okay, so for those of us who like it easy, you can just text IBC to 77977. Or you can give online through our website at inspirationbiblechurch.com. Uh, we also have a phone app that has a lot of a lot of things, including you can give on the phone app. And if you're looking for that, just it's IBC underscore Inspiration Bible Church. And boy, what what a treat they're about ready to, to have, aren't they? We're glad you're tuned in and let's get into the message today. Oh, excited for that. Excited for January. Time so to I, just I bet pray. that's brand new information to some people. So, um, yes, in January the 11th through the 15th, that is a Monday through Friday, we as a church body are going to commit that to prayer and fasting. And in this year, we're adding something new, and that is revival services every evening of that Monday through Friday right here. And we are asking God for souls saved. We are asking for miracles. We are asking for signs and wonders. And we are excited for what God is going to do in 2021. Amen. So, um, you know, and for those of you who I know a lot of you do the 21-day fast, you know, just keep going. You know, the do the five days and then do what, what you do as far as a fast. You know, everybody can choose their what type of fast they're wanting. But we are setting aside those five days as a church body to just really seek his face and to, to let God do what God does best. Yeah, the Bible, you know, says too fast. So just plan on it. Get your mind now. I know for me, every year fast, it just seems so intimidating. It's like, I don't know if I can do that. And every year I do it. But uh, there's always this resistance of my flesh. And uh, so just, just make up your mind. I'm going to fast. And you don't have to fast every meal. You know, figure out the fast you want to do. And, uh, but, but please fast. Figure out something, uh, a time frame uh, during those five days to fast. It's exciting. It is exciting. It's very exciting. And God says he rewards. He so does. Who diligently. How many serve a God that's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? Yes. Isn't that good? It's so we just so want we just want to start out the year diligently seeking him. And uh, I'm, I guarantee you, if you seek him early as the year progresses, what you invest at the beginning of the year, God will show it to you as the year progresses on. And you'll be so glad you fasted. Amen. All right, let's get our Bibles. Yeah. The B-I-B-L-E, that is the book for me. Yes, it is. I stand upon the Word of God. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have. I can have. What the Word of God, the Word of God says I can have. Says I can have. I can do. I can do. What the Word of God, what the Word of God says I can do. Says I can and do. And I can be. And I can what be. What the Word of God, the Word of God says, I can be. says I can be. Y'all believe that? I do. Father, we thank you for your Word. It is power. And Father, we just want to open up this word of power that is alive. And Father, may it just pierce into our heart and our soul. And Father, may it, we be transformed and be changed ever more into your image. In Jesus' name. Everyone said? Amen. 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 Well, this morning we want to talk about having Christmas faith. Christmas faith. And so in the Bible, when uh, Jesus was born, uh, there's some great examples of, of faith for Christmas, the arrival of Christ, but there's also some examples of not so much faith. And uh, as we go through these examples, we might be able to identify ourselves or aspire to greater levels of faith, um, but we want us to go from faith to faith. We want to grow in faith. How many want to grow in faith? You're at the right place at the right time for God to do something amazing in our lives. And what is faith? You know, faith is when you are firmly persuaded 
that what you have heard is truth. You're firmly, everybody say firmly. Firmly. You are firmly persuaded that what you have heard is truth. And there's no doubt in it. That's what faith is. Faith doesn't go back and forth. That's what James tells us, right? The book of James. It's not driven with the wind and tossed back and forth. It's firmly persuaded. There are some things in my life that I know that I know that I know. I am firmly persuaded, and no one's going to talk me out of it because I know that I know that I know. That's what faith is. You've heard something. You've heard the word of God. You've accepted it as that truth, and now it's in you. You know, I just want to uh, talk about that just for a minute because I think sometimes we hear the word faith, and we hear people say uh, faith is blind. You just got to just step out. But that's really not true. Because faith gives you information to step out. You're not just hoping that it's, it's going to... You know, take air travel, for instance. We buy airplane, airline tickets, and we have complete confidence that when we board that plane, we're going to fly from here to Dallas, and you know, we'll be there in, what is it, three and a half hour, four hour flight, and it's just... You have confidence that that aircraft is going to get you there. You're not, even, you're not even thinking doubtful thoughts. It's just like you look around at people on the plane and everyone's just calm. Well, most everyone's calm. And, uh, you know, it's just, but there's, there's uh, people have faith in the, the pilot, the crew, the aircraft. You might have a small understanding of the law of aerodynamics and lift, and you just established in your heart that when you board that craft all the the laws of aerodynamics are going to work and you're going to land safely and go about your business well you've got some knowledge the bible gives us knowledge for things to believe for it's not just man i hope this works i'm cross you crossing your fingers okay here we go that's not how faith works it's 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 what you said now, I was thinking as you were using that analogy, I'm actually not firmly persuaded that when I get in an airplane that it will get me to destination B. But that's just me because I know that sometimes they're derouted or things, things can happen, right? Um, you know, I believe in God for that, but I'm not firmly persuaded. There are things from God's word that I, can, I cannot be shaken on. You know, I got, I got an airplane, and most people have more faith in the airplane than they do in God's Word. So Unfortunately, I don't have that 100% faith in the airplane, but I do have 100% faith in what God has declared in His Word. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and verse 1. This is a familiar verse to many of you, but I'm telling you, we got to hear it this morning because we're leaky vessels. And it says, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. This is out of the New Living. I just love how the New Living said that. I got to say it again. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. There's so much going on that you cannot see with your natural eye. But that doesn't mean they're not going on. I can't see it with my natural but the spirit realm is going on. You know, in other words, it's really telling us you have ownership of what you're believing for before it materializes. Yep. You know, how many know Christmas is coming? <laughs> you know it's coming. And, you know, there's anticipation because you know it's coming and you know you're going to get gifts and you're just, you're excited for it. There's, there's an ownership of some things. Some of you may have already even peaked on your gifts. Somebody, in fact, I've, I, I've ran into a few people who can't wait till Christmas, so they open their gifts early and just start enjoying them. <laughs> I wasn't going to say names. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Little anxious there. Mm. But faith is, but it says faith shows the reality of what we're hoping for. So in other words, inside your heart, you know it's, you have it. 
It's on the way. And that's why praise is so important, because sometimes we have to praise our way to the, the manifestation of what we're believing God for. But you already have ownership of it. You know, I just share this story. When we were believing for this building, um, we, we live real close by, and we were at that white church, you know, holding services. And, and something was just drawing me to this building at the time. Probably need to get back to it, but that's another story. But I, I would go running down at Point Defiance Park. Is that the part you need to get back to? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I do. <laughs> need to do something. Help me, Jesus. And so I would come here, and I would just, I would just pray. It was just, uh, just a time to pray. And then I would go do my run and, and come back. And then one time I was here, and the Lord just spoke to me. He goes, uh, you're going to hold your church services in this building. And I was just like, I'm just coming here just to pray. But all of a sudden, God showed me something. I went home, and I told Starlene, I go, Starlene, you know that church down there on Pearl Street? We're going to be in that building. And she's like, cool. <laughs> but I had a note of victory on the inside of me. I had it. And several months later, boom, here we were. And it, it was, and that's how faith works. Yeah. You own it. You own it. On the inside before you have the tangible reality of it on right. the outside. Right. Okay, let's look at a couple people in the Christmas story that had some faith. We're going to look at Zechariah as the first one. So Zechariah, was a, he was a Jewish high priest, and both he and his wife were elderly, and they were beyond childbearing years, okay? That just wasn't, you know, you get older, and it's not really like you're, you know, popping out babies. <clears throat> But here, as the time goes on, we, we discover that he becomes the father of John the Baptist. And who was the forerunner or the person ahead of Jesus who was to proclaim that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, was going to walk the earth. And uh, we're going to pick up in Luke chapter 1. So, uh, Zach, this uh, John the Baptist's baby was going to take place about six months before Jesus's birth was going to take place. So in Luke chapter 1, let's start in verse 11. It says, while Zechariah was in the sanctuary, an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the incense altar. Verse 12, Zechariah was shaken and overwhelmed with fear when he saw him. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give you a son, and you are to name him John. You will have great joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I be sure this will happen? I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. So this is kind of an example of not having faith. So, again, he had some information. The angel from God is in his face declaring what's going to happen. And uh, so faith isn't blind. He's got information from a messenger giving him the details of what's going to take place, who this child's going to be. And instead of accepting what the angel said, his response was, how can this be? How can I be how sure? Can I, how can I be sure? Or in other words, how can I have faith to believe what you're saying is true? And how many know this is really the battle a lot of us faith, fa face because natural law collides with supernatural things. God can do something supernaturally, but our mind says, well, that doesn't add up correctly. But how many got, know God supersedes 
natural law. Well, cancer just doesn't go away. Right. But COVID, when God's in COVID just doesn't go away. But when God's involved and he does a miracle, things change, right? So here's Zacchaeus facing a messenger from God and he's like, "How can I be sure?" Some translations, "How can I believe that? How can I believe what you're saying is true?" So uh, yeah, it's kind of a, an example. Of you know, and what's what I find interesting about this story is he'd been praying for it. Yeah. So obviously, somewhere along the line, he gave up what he was believing God for. And possibly because of the age and oh, just yeah, biological the facts, change. The biological right. facts. I don't know about you, but you might be have been praying for something, and the biological facts now supersede your faith. Mm -hmm. What you, I'm going to say it again. Yeah, I got quiet in here. You're watching right now. You've been praying for something, but you've put it on a shelf because the facts and the circumstances don't line up and you've given up. It is time to take what you put on a shelf, take it off the shelf, and it doesn't matter what the circumstances or the biological facts are. It matters what God said about it. It's time to believe God. And that's called faith. So here we have an, an example of someone who had prayed for something, prayed to have a child, but gave up. And we see that because the words are, how can I be sure that this is going to happen? Hello, biologically, I'm old, she's old. Duh. Right? So here, physical facts were outweighing what God had said. You know, and this isn't, this isn't a new thing. Abraham was faced with the same thing. How many yep. know God's time is not your time? And how many know that frustrates us? Well, Abraham... God, he had a visitation too. Yeah. You're gonna, you and Sarah are old. Got it. But God's gonna do a miracle. Okay, cool. He believed it, but time went on, and he had another idea. There wasn't a God idea. How many know we can have a good idea, but it's not a God idea. Right. And those good ideas get in the way of God doing what He wants to do. Yeah. And some sometimes are. The delay frustrates us. Obviously, Zechariah was probably in that place and had given up, but he was a high priest. He, he's not an ignorant person of what God can do. Right. He, he was schooled in the Word of God. He knew God does He knew God rescued the Israelites out of slavery. He knew they crossed the Red Sea. He knew they went into the promised land. He knew they stood in battle lines without weapons and defeated entire armies. He knew all these stories and he knew of God. But how many know sometimes we know God up here but it doesn't travel the 12 inches to get into our heart. We have a mental ascent of what God can do but do, are you firmly persuaded that what he says is truth beyond what your head thinks so good so as this christmas story progresses we know that mary also had a visitation and was also given the same information and was she going to accept this as truth or not so you know i, I just want to pick up though in verse 19 here um, because the angel with Zachariah, before we get to Mary, made it pretty clear who was communicating. So verse 19, then the angel said, I am Gabriel. Dude, Dude I'm Gabriel. I stand in the very presence of God. It was he who sent me to bring you this good news. But now, since you didn't believe, uh-oh. But now, since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words will 
certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. He's saying, if God said it, it's going to happen. But God just really doesn't like unbelief. I'll tell you, church, God still doesn't like unbelief. He doesn't like you to go into doubt. He just doesn't. You can go clear back to the beginning in Genesis and all through hundreds of years of history. God's never smiled on unbelief. What he smiles on is faith. And here we see it in the Christmas story. He's smiling on faith. So we got to look at Mary. What happened to Mary? Poor Zach, man. I'm just getting over that. You know, it's like, okay, you want a sign? I'll give you a sign. <laughs> You're not going to say nothing. You're not going to get to say nothing. So Mary. Mary you know, well, wait a second. I bet his wife might have went, whoo, I'm getting in my word count this week. You can't talk. <laughs> so I'm going to make up for time here. Sorry, I just couldn't help it. Us women, got a, we have so many words. I don't know why God made us that way, but we have way more word count than men. Amen. <laughs> Mary, the mother of Jesus, this story, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 26, and it goes on, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, John the Baptist's pregnancy, uh, Zachariah's wife, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confessed. Uh, confused. confused. Thank you. Confused and disturbed. Mary tried to think of what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I just want to stop, well, I'll, I'll just, but remember that phrase. She asked, how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of God will never fail. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Ooh, okay, let's go back to you. Mary asked a question. Now, her question was not a doubt question. Her question was, explain to me the details. So she believed. She wasn't in doubt, but she's like, she's a typical woman. We want the details. Right? right? Come on, ladies. Do we want the details? We want the details. And she's like, could you spell this out for me a little bit more? Because I've never been with a man. And how am I getting pregnant? Can you kind of clue me in here? I have asked God many times to clue me in on stuff, and he's so good with me. He's such a good father. He's so gentle with me, and he kind of clues me in and goes, okay, this is how the details are going to look like. So he clued her in on the details, but it wasn't that she was asking, like, how can this be? Like, oh, how could this be? It was like, um, how can this be? Because I'm, I'm, I'm a virgin. So it's the same angel appeared to both of them. Same both guy, of them same were, angel. like, scared and in awe. Angel replied to both of them, hey, chill out. I'm Gabriel. Come from God. I got some good news for you. They both had the same initial experiences. And Zacharias was, well, how, am I, how can I believe this? That was doubt. Mary's was basically, okay, I've accepted what you're true, but how are the mechanics of this thing going to play out? See the difference? Mechanics. That's a that's a guy yeah, that's word. Right. That's we us ladies say details. Guys say what are the mechanics of this? Right. Yeah. What's the nuts and bolts of this thing? Are we gonna put it together? 
But she believed what she was hearing, and she accepted it as truth, that she was, in fact, going to be pregnant. And uh, She was firmly she was, persuaded. I'm going to be pregnant. I'm going to have a baby. And then she ends with saying, let everything you have said happen to me. You know, wow. I just think that's a little nugget wow. that when you read God's word, because how many know this is inspired word of God? Who's the author of this book? God? Holy Spirit moved upon men to write. It's a living book. It is holy. It is God's word to you. Just as much as if you had an angelic visitation. That's the reality of this word. So when you find a promise in God's word that you need, why don't you say what Mary? May what I just heard in my spirit happen unto me. So let me, let me help somebody, whether you're here or you're watching. You have read the scripture, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And some of you have accepted it as truth. You were persuaded. But after many circumstances of your children and your grandchildren not serving God, you put it on a shelf because the circumstances didn't look like this was ever going to happen. Be firmly persuaded that what God has said to your heart, he will fulfill. That as for your children and your children's children, they will serve the Lord. Take that off the shelf and be firmly persuaded. Don't allow yourself to be in doubt by circumstances that are contrary to what God's word says and what you know in your heart, God has spoken to you. Get that off the shelf and stir up your faith. This Christmas is time for you to stir up your faith concerning some promises. Maybe it's your loved one that is dealing with cancer. Maybe it's your loved one dealing with COVID. Come on, don't lose faith in the middle of trials. Tests and trials happen in this life. But it is not time to give up during the test or during the trial. It is time to stand firm. Now, we do live in a fallen world. And I know there's probably even somebody watching that's saying, but I've been through some things, and it didn't turn out the way I'd hoped for. Death does happen. We live in a world where death happens. Am I right? How many have lost some loved ones? My hand's raised, too. Death will happen in this world. But it doesn't negate the word of God that healings happen in the midst of death. How many have had loved ones healed? How many have been healed themselves? Okay. The word of God is not contrary to each other. It complements each other. Death happens because we live in a fallen world. Bad things happen in this world. But it doesn't negate that the promises of God for the believer are still yes and amen. We can still hold fast. I'll never forget, Pastor Greg, one time we walked into a situation where we've walked into situations like this before where a loved one was getting ready to pass and they wanted us to come and they wanted us to just be around the loved one and, and say, it's okay to let it. We're saying, you know, go be with Jesus. And we've been a part of those and we've prayed, you know, and we've looked, I've looked some right in the eye and said, it's okay. Go be with Jesus. This is your time. We've also walked into situations where the family and the individual was like, this is not the time. And we are believing God right now for healing. And I remember, you remember the time when it, I mean, it looked bleak. It looked, I mean, the doctors are saying they're not going to make it. Everything in the natural, it was, they're, they're going to go. And I remember we, we met with the family and the family's like, no, it is not the time. And we had a decision to make. Can we muster up the faith to believe with them against all circumstances? I don't know if you've ever been in that situation, but against the circumstances, we had to muster up our own faith because we, we heard the report too. And we had to believe the report of the Lord of what they were believing for. 
and uh, you prayed the prayer and, and just share God gave you what did God tell you at that moment yeah, the news was oxygen levels were down, heart rates down, blood pressures down. Everything was like, this lady is passing away. And I'm like, they want me to pray and have faith? I got no faith for this. And I'll never forget, we're praying with them, and they, they go, Pastor, pray. And I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, what am I supposed to pray? I got nothing. And so in this awkward, silent moment, I'm praying to God, God, what am I supposed to do? you got to help me. I don't just want to give some kind of placate religious prayer to make everyone feel good. I want to pray that this is real. I'm talking to you. I'll never forget. Change my life. The Lord just spoke to me. As long as they're breathing, there's hope. So you pray based upon hope. Well, that gave me direction. Okay, I'm not going to look at the situation they're physically in, but I'm going to look at your word. And by your stripes, that woman's healed. And so we went on to pray. And uh, after the church, we went to the hospital, and they were removing all the equipment off her because the time frame from when the time we, we prayed, she had an instantaneous turnaround. That was crazy. But it was a lesson. It was a lesson to us. I'll never forget. Yes. Okay, let's talk about some wise men. You ever heard of the wise guys? The wise guys in the story of Christmas? Let's talk about some wise men. Um, these were astrologers, uh, kings, ma magicians. Um, some, of those, some of those are the names even in your translations that are given. Um, and they had believed, um, they, they came from, from Babylon. Can you help me here? So Babylon is modern-day Iraq. And it's interesting that Daniel was in Babylon. How many know the story of Daniel? He got taken out of Israel, a bunch of them, and got deported to live. And very interesting story. But Daniel uh, lived as a statesman through four terms of kings. And he set up a, a school, a Bible school in Iraq. And so it is believed that these wise men, 400 years later, we're still a part of the school Daniel set up back in the day. And so these people had heard prophecies, had heard words, had knowledge that a Messiah was going to be born. They were looking, they were expecting, they had anticipation based upon the teachings that were coming out of this school. So these uh, high official people right. were looking. Is anybody looking for God to do something today? See, we need to be schooled in our mind to have an expectation that God's not asleep at the wheel. He's doing something in 2020, and he's going to be doing something in 2021. But if we, if we fall asleep and we don't care, you expect nothing, and guess what you will receive? Nothing. You know what I love about as we're moving into the wise men, the wise men did not get an angelic uh, visitation from Gabriel. They were digging into the word of this is the prophetic word we are basing our faith on that it will come to pass. So you're saying we can parallel yes. the wise men yes. in how we believe. We have dug into the word of God. If you've been with us for a while, you know we have studied, Revel even gone through revelations. We've talked about end times here. We, we know what the Word of God says. We've studied it. We know. So based on our study, we can be firmly persuaded that what God has said, He will do. So these astrologers and these wise men had studied, and they knew that the Messiah was coming. And so when they saw the star, they already knew. Church, you're, gonna, you're seeing some, some things happening you already know. It's not catching you off guard. You already know. Okay, Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. 
And about that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose. I got to stop there for a minute. There are so many things even today that are happening in the, in the stars and in the sky. Um, you know, it's, it's Saturn and Jupiter are getting ready to line up. There's, I mean, astrology is not a thing of the past. It's still going on today. We still see signs and wonders in the heavenlies today. Okay. Verse 2, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the, the Messiah supposed to be born? So here he is going, okay, I know you know the word of God. Anybody today in our world asking you questions? Okay, I know you're a Christian. I know you're supposed to know the Word of God. Can you help me? Is this what's going on in 2020? Is this in the Word of God? Have you had that happen? I have. And so here, he, they're saying, uh, this is, is this in the Word of God? Verse 5, in Bethlehem in Judea, they said. So they knew. They already knew where the Messiah was supposed to be born. For this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men. And he learned from them the time of when the star first appeared. Verse 8, then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. And they entered the house, just an FYI, I think most of you know this, they're not going to the manger scene. This is later on. They're going to the house. Yeah, he's, a, he's about between one and two here. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. And then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So I love what you said that these men studied God's word and they put such confidence in God's word and believed it as truth beyond a shadow of a doubt a Messiah is born we're going to worship him now we see the little scenes of Christmas and we saw it up here and one of our songs for songs that you know there's wise men three wise men and a couple camels and they're trekking across the desert and um, but when you read a little deep into this story, it says Jerusalem was stirred by these wise men. Now, if three guys come walking into town, it's not that big of a deal. But if an entourage comes walking into town, it's got everybody's attention. And it's believed uh, by some biblical historians that there's as many as 12 or more kings wise men that were accompanying this and they didn't just have a little box of gold they had camel loads so if you are cro coming across the desert with camel loads full of treasure um, you want to make sure you got a couple friends with you <laughs> Smith would be a good friend Lassen, Ruger you know what I'm saying so they had Raleigh you know, you want, a, you, want a bunch of, you want a bunch of people accompany you to make sure your treasure gets, and this wasn't just a cross-town journey. This was hundreds of miles from Iraq into Israel. So this was an entourage, and the, the food supply and the tents and on and on. So here comes this entourage, and it's got the attention of Herod. And these aren't just insignificant people. These are prestigious people. So the songs and the, the things we see at Christmas, we, we kind of just 
think that's how it was. Well, that's really not how it was. There's as many as 60 to 100 people coming into town with camel loads and people. Now, now, if, 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 I don't know about you, but if you take a long journey like that, you better know that you know that yeah, you know there you go. There you go. where you're going, you got some substance on the other end of your destination. Right. You see, a lot of people go, I'll believe it when I see it. Then I will participate. Then I will, I will send messengers out ahead to test the waters. Is what they're saying really true? Are do these signs and biblical things, are they adding up? They didn't do that. They didn't, no, we're loading the camels, we're loading the gold, we're loading the, the treasures, and we're getting our posse together, and we're trekking across the desert. Do you know how much faith that took to get all the gold together, the frankincense, the myrrh, get all of those wealth ready to give it away based on just the word of God and prophetic words? They, I, don't, I don't know how many wealthy people are ready to just pack up all their wealth and trek across the desert and be ready to give it away based on some digging they did in the Word of God. Believing without a, without a shadow of a doubt that what they read was true. You know, we go on trips, and we go to see things, and we get a little goosebump. Hey, we went there, and we saw the beautiful waterfall. Woo! They didn't go to get a goosebump. They went to, to give and worship Hundreds of thousands of dollars they were leaving mm -hmm. and going home without. Yeah. I mean, we're talking faith yeah. that is something we need to aspire to. How you much know, do you believe this word to be accurate and true? Their wallet. You know, we today, you know, we talk about tithes and offerings, and we, you know, some people have a hard time with that. They already had so much faith that they took the money with them. And we're ready to give it away to a baby. That's a lot of faith. I mean, let's think about it. You're ready to give away your wealth to a baby. They had so much faith that they knew that baby was the son of God. Wow. And how did it happen? Because they had faith based upon what they had heard. They were firmly persuaded. Firmly persuaded. They were not in doubt. You couldn't tell them otherwise. Yep. Not because Gabriel came and visited them, but because they were reading the same word of God you and I have. That's an incredible story. Wow. Would you stand? <sighs> wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in this place. Thank you, Father God, for stirring in us the desire to believe for the impossible, to believe for what we cannot see with our natural eye, but to believe what your word has declared. God is the God of miracles. The greatest miracle he can do for you is you would be born again. <laughs> there would be a new you, a new version of you, a redeemed you. And it begins with putting faith in God that he loves you. He sent a son to be a sacrifice for you and all your mistakes, to redeem your life from eternal destruction and to give you a place in eternity, in glory, and that you may have life here and now more abundantly. And it begins with a simple faith. I believe Jesus came for me. I believe he washed my sins. I believe his blood was not shed in vain. I believe he died for me. I believe he rose again for me. I believe he's preparing a place for me. It's that belief, that confession, that he is Lord of my life, that we become born again. It might be an emotional experience, but it might just be I know this to be truth, and I accept it without any emotion. We want to give somebody, several, whether you're watching online or here in this building, 
Jesus loves you. And there's no better time to receive Jesus Christ than the here and the now. So I want to count to three and give people an opportunity to just respond to Jesus. Stir up your faith and know that you know that you know Jesus loves you. One, he loves you. Two, don't let feelings or thoughts persuade you otherwise. Three, respond. Raise your hand right here in this room. Respond to Jesus. Get born again. Get rededicated. Thank you, Father Amen, God. amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Would you just repeat this prayer? Those of you watching, this is your moment. This is your moment to get right with God, to believe, firmly persuaded that what He has done for you is truth. He's reaching out for you. Church, would you repeat this prayer after me? Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you. I thank you. For the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus. That forgives me. That forgives me. From all. From all. My sin. My sin. And where I have fallen short. where I have fallen short. Of your best. Of your best. I ask today. I ask today. That you would be. That you would be. My Savior. My Savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. That means completely. That means completely. In charge of my in, life. In charge of my I life. I surrender it all. I surrender it all. To you. To you. And I thank you. And I thank you. For this seed of faith. For the seed of faith. That is being stirred up. That is being stirred up. Right now. Right now. To believe. To believe. In you. In you. And to believe. And to believe. In your promises. In your promises. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey. Well, change who I am.